China today is a spectacular vision of modernity, a place of dynamism and opportunity. Every visitor, especially if you've been coming since the 1980s as I have, is astonished by the scale of its growth and the sheer speed of change. It was only in the mid-20th century that China went through its own industrial revolution, struggling to catch up with the West. But in the last few decades, a giant burst of growth has taken it to a leading role in the world. Just 40 years ago, China had a new leader, a five-foot-tall chain-smoking veteran of the Long March with a reputation for pragmatism over ideology, Deng Xiaoping. Under Deng, China renounced class struggle and embraced the market. It saw the biggest lifting of people out of poverty that has ever taken place in human history. China became a global economic force, predicted to become the world's biggest economy in a couple of decades. But what actually happened 40 years ago? And how did China do it? Forty years ago, China was still an agricultural country, as it had been throughout its history. Eighty percent of the people still worked the land, and most were poor. In 1976, after the death of Chairman Mao, Deng Xiaoping returned from the countryside, where he'd been sent into exile to do manual labor. An elder statesman now, He'd always been a stalwart defender of the Communist Party. But in exile, he'd seen the system had failed to improve the lives of the mass of the people. In Deng's view, China's deep-rooted social and economic problems were the product of its history. He has a very strong sense of history. You know, he said that China was a leading nation over 1,000 years at least, actually up to the Ming Dynasty, to Zheng He. Then China began to close door. Then China began to uh, decline. Keen to learn from the outside world, Deng sent missions to Asia and Europe, the key one led by Gu Mu. Gu Mu is the Chinese government's head of state. In 1978, in August, he led a 30-person delegation to the South Asian countries, including the United States, 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 and the United States. He returned after the United States Committee to a summary report. First, he realized 欧洲国家的经济、科技发展水平很高，而中国远远的落后了。古墓还汇报了一个重要的情况，就是这五个国家领导人都希望同中国建立密切的经济联系。And they were prepared to help China also. Is that right? Yeah. 因为他们意识到中国是巨大的市场，帮助中国发展的同时，他们自己也能得到发展的机会。Deng swiftly followed. By going abroad himself to Singapore and Japan to see what China's future could look like. Deng was one of the few uh, communist leaders in China who was exposed to the outside world. He spent almost six years uh, in France as a part work, part study student. So, this kind of uh, international outlook helped him. He wanted to see the latest science and technology, but he also wanted to know about the lives of the ordinary people. He asked specifically uh, CCTV, the central television crew, to film people's life. 
He said, please focus on how ordinary people in Japan lived, in Singapore lived. Yeah. It's an eye-opening for, for Chinese at that time. Mm. You know, uh, when the Chinese saw through the television, uh, Japanese workers have uh, refrigerators at home, you know. It's <laughs> awakening, it's a, it's a shock. Here in the village of Shaogang, in November 1978, something happened that changed the course of Chinese history. Desperate local farmers broke with the commune system of collective farming. They just wanted to be free to live their own lives, earn a fair wage for a fair day's work, even make a bit of money. And one night in this house, they secretly made a deal to end the collective agricultural system and go back to family farms. It was against the law, but it was for life, for the people, and for the future. What did you, what were the words that you put on the document? What was the agreement you made together? We signed this agreement and were you, were you scared that the, the government might find out? Was it dangerous to, to do that? So, we were very nervous at that time. If we don't do that, we will be killed. If we don't do that, we will be damaged. We chose this way. We will be able to do that. We will be able to do that. We will be able to do that. So, the order was given to the ordinary people of China were already seeking a new road. And in an extraordinary piece of synchronicity, at that very moment in November 1978, a conference about work and the conditions of agriculture began in Beijing. Sensing the mood in the country, Deng decided to attend and to make an important speech. The big grey building on the corner is the Jinshi Hotel. Uh, it's quite difficult to find. There's no sign saying it's a hotel. And not everybody can book in there, especially if you're a foreigner. Although, if you look it up on TripAdvisor, it says that the, the decor is lovely and the staff are extremely good looking and very well trained. But it's owned by the People's Liberation Army. And many important meetings of the Communist Party have taken place there over the last few decades showing the path of China's future. But none of them so important as the meeting in December 1978. 200 delegates had come from all over China. They met here in this room to discuss work and the commune system of agriculture. Still maneuvering for power against the hardliners, Deng prepared a short keynote speech that crystallized all he'd thought about in his years in the wilderness. The key, Deng said, was to end argument based on ideology. From now on, we must seek truth from facts. We have had grave setbacks, he admitted. The wonderful Chinese people have been very patient for we have let the people down. From now on, he said, we must embrace science and technology, open up the market, and use the economy to lift people out of poverty. Some of his audience were shocked, but most were excited. He concluded, the time has come to liberate our minds.
He has avoided the radical approach, uh, so he took a middle course focusing on improving people's living standards. That's the key message of Deng Xiaoping. On the 1st of January, 1979, the USA recognized the People's Republic of China. And then in mid-January, Deng went to Washington to meet President Jimmy Carter and to begin a new age. Back home, the reforms began in the South, the historic dynamo of China's economy. And they would change China and the world. In the 40 years since, even the farmers in the famine lands of Anhui would open their own small businesses. Food on every plate now. While the cities of the South will become the world's biggest manufacturing base. That one society that's that huge could change so rapidly, it's just staggering. It's just staggering, and, and none of us predicted it. In the 20th century, if you say, what leader did more to change the world than any other, I think you have to say Deng Xiaoping. <laughs>